I want um, to welcome all the participants who have now arrived to this meeting at Access. Um, my name is Ruth Mendes and I'm the project coordinator of the City of Lisbon. Today we are going to present a case study very centered on participation, one of the axes of uh, our network, specifically about the project that involved a territory, uh, Rocio de Palma Square. Um, set in a popular neighborhood where a village style square and its surrounding houses are framed by high modern buildings, uh, the uh, urban <laughs> renewal. <laughs> Sorry, there is someone with the, okay with the sound now. Uh, well, um, this urban renewal pa plan, a square in each neighborhood, drew away the local inhabitants. Alexandra Sabino, that is one of my closest colleagues at the Municipality of Lisbon and my companion of many challenges, is beginning this presentation. Alexandra works as an advisor for the Deputy Mayor of Culture. She studied international relations and began her activity in cultural production at Porto 2001, European Capital of Culture. Uh, for the community involvement area. She passed for several projects related to performative arts like dance, theater, and classical music. And then we also invited Ruben Teodoro from Collective Warehouse. Warehouse is a Lisbon-based collective working across architecture, um, product design, and art, deeply involved on cultural and social projects. They combine multidisciplinary tools from architecture, urbanism, sociology, carpentry, and design to develop their own methodologies based on participation, engagement, and co-creation. So let's hear them on Rocio de Palma Square. Um, Alexandra, I'll pass it to you. Uh, hello, good morning. Welcome. Uh, good morning to all who are participating in this session. Thank you, Ruth. Thank you, all of you who organized these meetings. And thank you to the partner cities in the Access Program. Um, I'm, like Ruth said, I'm here to talk about a proximity project in a small neighborhood called Rousseau de Palma, and one that I think has been very successful in its goals. Let me share my presentation here. Just a second. Okay. I think you can all see it. Yes. Okay. So this project um, began as a pilot measure of a larger learning program for the implementation of Agenda 21 for Culture, which is promoted by the Culture Committee of UCLG, United Cities and Local Governments. As many of you may know, uh, Agenda 21 for Culture is a narrative that uh, advocates that culture is the fourth pillar of uh, sustainable development, setting a group of commitments and actions to enhance the importance of culture and to demonstrate its value in all areas of municipal intervention. So as part of uh, our work plan for this program, Pilot City, one of the things that we wanted to address was our low articulation with urban planning. We also wanted to include the community participation component uh, to intervene in a territory lacking in cultural dynamic and work on different governance models. So knowing that the urban planning department of Lisbon was undertaking a rehabilitation program to create public square, uh, squares in each neighborhood, a square in each neighborhood, neighborhood was the, the name, and it was a long process involving more than 30 squares. Uh, we always thought that this was very uh, interesting to work together, adding the cultural dimension in the use of these public spaces. And why did we choose Rousseau de Palma? So we uh, started by choosing from the squares that uh, had just been rehabilitated. And in Rousseau de Palma, the construction had just been over and we knew that the local population was not satisfied with some of the changes made to the square. Um, Rousseau de Palma, uh, is in the northwestern part of Lisbon. It's not city center, uh, but it's close to everything. And it, uh, it is surrounded by tall buildings. It's close to a big university, uh, but it looks just like a small village. Uh, it is surrounded by tall buildings. It's called, uh, um, sorry, 
um, it says low houses. Around the square, there are uh, very uh, small houses. Um, there's a local cafe, very good restaurants, and neighbors who have known each other forever. So we fell completely in love with it. Uh, here, you can see how it looked like in the, in the 80s, then in 2015, still before the rehabilitation, it's not much different. And then after our colleagues' intervention. We also realized that in this case, it had been the result of a, a failed participation process. Um, our colleagues, um, um, I mean, in each square, the, our colleagues launched uh, an online inquiry. But since the majority of the population of this neighborhood is over 60 years old, this method was not at all suited for them. They also had local meetings, but they were presented by officials in their suits, not leaving much room for debate. And uh, I, I can say this because I've talked to our colleagues and they agreed that at, at times it was very intimidating for the people who came to the meetings. So we needed to find a new method, one that would be able to really understand what the people from Palma wanted. And we didn't want to start having concerts and events that didn't mean anything to the people that we were working for. For that, uh, we gathered a very small core team with very specific characteristics. Uh, besides me, uh, we had Edith, I think some of you know her, um, Marco from the um, Cultural uh, Arts Division and Sofia from the, um, the Heritage uh, uh, Department a sociologist and Patricia from the borough. And uh, we added from there, uh, the public space team, the local stakeholders, artists, and the GEAC, the municipal company that runs our cultural venues. Then uh, we started knocking on doors. Uh, we met with the, the, for example, the local football club, and we learned about local intrigues and a, a club takeover. Um, so, and Sophia then started to go to the square every Friday afternoon. And she now knows almost everyone in, in the neighborhood, the, the family tree of everyone. <laughs> um, and then so we started with the first uh, public meeting. It was in September. We went door to door to invite the, the inhabitants to talk to her, to us. And uh, some of them came with a pile of papers ready to make complaints. But we are not, were not in our suits and we didn't look menacing at all. Uh, so the conversation started to flow very naturally. And in the end, uh, the most fierce protester was already our best ally. And this first, first meeting was very important because we were able to set our ultimate goal, which was to fill the square again with festivities. People talked about the dances, the city's festivities in June, children playing in the square. Well, and we also made a list of complaints. Uh, they wanted a children's playground, more shade, benches with bags, so that uh, older people could lean. And they wanted also the broken fountain to work again, because it meant a lot for them. And uh, they also talked uh, about a collective, uh, collective clothes line, a line to hang clothes out, out, out to dry, which had disappeared with the rehabilitation. We also learned about other housing and social problems, and we made sure that these cases were reported to the right departments. From here, we decided three things, that we needed a project that would gather people around the common goal, that this project should be about people's memories uh, of the neighborhoods and that we wanted a monthly uh, regular activity. Here you can see the posters that uh, we used to promote some of these activities. We would uh, distribute, it, uh, distribute them door to door. And this, uh, in local cafes, in restaurants and via one uh, Facebook group that we came to know. Uh, called the Friends of Palma, uh, which is made of uh, previous inhabitants of the neighborhoods. And this is very important because many of these previous inhabitants grew up there, still have their parents living there, there and continue to participate in this neighborhood life uh, and feel very nostalgic about what they see as their, their home. 
So the next step um, was to start collecting stories and photographs. Each Friday, Sophia had new stories and lots of new photos that you can see here. Uh, and uh, uh, these photos are now part of our municipal photo archive. Uh, also in, in each event that we organized, this was an opportunity to gather more photos and stories. Uh, our next event, uh, we, we showed um, a movie in a football field, uh, the local football club. Uh, and this film was about our football legend Eusebio. And because we didn't have a movie screen, uh, we improvised one uh, in the goal and it worked really well. Um, then in February, we organized the Fado night in a local restaurant with the collaboration of the Fado Museum and in partnership with the same football club. So at, um, uh, sorry, at this point, we had so much material that we decided that we could do a documentary about all that we had been learning. And here you can see some um, of the interview sessions made by our colleagues in the municipal video library. We also got the fountain to work again, and we included Rousseau de Palma in the traveling library's itinerary. But, but since the, the beginning, one of our givens uh, was that it was absolutely necessary to include the creative contemporary artistic elements to link all this together. We had the film, but we knew that it was necessary to have something in the square. And this is where Collective Warehouse comes in the picture with a wonderful, wonderful proposal. Uh, Ruben will talk uh, next about this project, but I will just say that it was a high point of the work we did and fulfilled all that we set out to do. And it was also very emotional to see people's reaction to the, the way they used the, their, their photographs. It was uh, the, the same reaction as to Camilla Watson's project, uh, uh, also at the same time. It's called the Memory in, in Our Steps. I think it's, uh, it can be a translation. Uh, Camilla is a photographer and she used typical Portuguese calçada, the, the white stone, to print the photographs that we had collected. And about this, I, I want to tell you an episode. Uh, the, bride, the bride in the photograph of the wedding that you saw before, uh, she was very displeased when she saw the, photos on, uh, the photo on the floor. She said people were going to step on it, dogs could pee on it, and she, she saw it as shameful. Uh, she even cried. Then one of, of the, the other neighbors turned to her and said, you need to understand that this is art. The photo isn't yours anymore. Um, it belongs to, 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 to the neighborhoods. Uh, it's part of the history of the place now. And for me, this was a sign that the people from the neighborhood had assimilated the value of the artistic work, arrived to their own interpretation and understood its collective sense and became themselves, in a very natural way, the cultural mediators. And this, of course, was very rewarding. Uh, we then um, organized a public event for the inauguration of these three works, uh, and a month later, a community lunch, and for which the city offered a roasted pig. <laughs> and this was a huge su success. Uh, and this was also the moment that the square filled again with people, just like yeah. been asked in the first meeting. There were different generations in this lunch, mothers, daughters, sons, grandsons, new residents, people from the surrounding buildings, ex-residents. But, uh, um, but this was not, uh, not the end. Uh, we, we wanted, uh, our intent was not to arrive to an end point. It was necessary, we wanted to continue. Uh, and so we did by involving more closely our municipal venues. Here uh, you can see the construction of the St. Anthony's uh, Shrine, uh, a, a project developed by the, the St. Anthony M Museum. Um, and here another event, uh, the, a tango class, which was part of the Dancing in Lisbon program that exists for a few years now, but that never happened in, in this borough. We also visited the Lisbon Museum, Museum Reserves, which are very near the square. 
and uh, the residents of Palma were the first ones to be able to visit this collection. Uh, and we had to organize several more visits because the demand uh, was such. And now, uh, since the beginning of 2020, we had to stop the activities, but we were still able to place these info points, also created by Collective Warehouse. And now we use it to communicate with people from the neighborhoods and show pictures and other, other materials that we collect from uh, uh, now and from other event, events. Um, as a conclusion, um, we can say that it was difficult to work together with other areas, but we have now established a good method and relationship. We learned that a constant uh, pre presence is essential uh, and it's really necessary to create reg regular events and human proximity. We learned that the solution is to simplify and to embrace what is already being done as opposed to multiplying resource resources and projects. And mainly that it, it was very important to have the time to experiment and uh, we did have that privilege of being able to fail because it was a small project and out of the spotlight. And of course, this uh, uh, was possible because of our deputy mayor, uh, Katerina Vashpin, who allowed us to have this time. Uh, and now our goal is to, to continue this uh, dynamic, uh, on, to, to have it continue on its own once we stop being in the front line. And this is a model that we can use for other territories and a source of experience for a bigger project uh, for other neighborhoods. So, and uh, now I, to finish, I would like to show you the trailer of our still to be premiered documentary that uh, our municipal videotech has made. I hope that you enjoy it. Antigamente os médicos diziam, não precisa de ir para qualquer lado para ter ar puro, porque ali onde mora tem muito ar puro e tínhamos na altura os eucaliptos, os pinheiros, tudo aqui à volta tinha, agora já não é bem assim. Portanto, no verão a gente chegava, uh, era a bola principalmente, e, e brincar aos cobóis e, e às escondidas, e de inverno era o tempo do Berlim, de, o tempo do espeta, o aro, com uma gancheta, chegar à bola, subir as árvores. Acartei água para a casa da minha mãe, da minha avó, e eu e a minha mãe durante muitos anos, muitos anos que acartávamos água para Palma, porque só muito mais tarde, ai até bem, ao 25 de Abril, poucas pessoas tinham água aqui no bairro dentro de casa. E era assim, iam aos chafariz buscar, as pessoas iam ali lavar a roupa, à tarde era mais emplumado no verão, os cavalos saíam da quinta e iam beber água ao chafariz. A Guilmar, coitada da pior do que eu. Eu sou a velha azinhaga que sempre dei serventia. Hoje que já fui tapada, já vos não sirvo de guia. Já não sou as águas boas, como já fui noutras eras. Agora sou coisa fina, passei a parque de feras. Thank 
you, Alexandra. <laughs> and uh, shall we pass to Ruben Teodoro to explain us uh, a bit more about the warehouse, uh, warehouse collective work on yes. José de Palma? Thank Hello, you. everybody. Thank you, Ruth, and thank you, Alexandra, for this for this uh, presentation. Um, just going to share my presentation as well. Um, yeah, we are seeing it. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Just cannot go. Sorry. I need to reach the top. <laughs> OK. Um, OK. Oh. in the end, sorry. Okay, um, so my name is Ruben. I'm part of, a, I'm a member of Collective Warehouse. Um, and I will just explain you really briefly what is Collective Warehouse, so you understand a bit what it's our uh, praxis. And then I will move deep, deeply to this specific project. So Warehouse as a hood, uh, already introduced, we are a, a collective based in Lisbon and we work across many things, but mostly architecture, arts, building, cooperation, participation. Uh, we, we work not only in Portugal, but also around Europe and mainly we involve ourselves in cultural and social projects because are the ones that we seek more value in the way we work. Um, what we've been um, uh, trying to create is our uh, method of of, uh, uh, of a process of architectural process or art process. And for us, uh, the problem is that since the beginning, these conventional uh, processes are quite close in the author of the of the project. Um, let's say the architect or the urbanist or even the, the artist. And for us, it doesn't make sense to, to do it like that, especially if we, if we are working on, on public space, because there's a lot of things that we, we need to add to the process. So what you see in black is mainly what we, uh, simplifying, it's, it's what we think it's very important to actually um, uh, introduce more to these processes. And um, mainly it's, uh, it's to, to, since the beginning of the process is actually to, to start to do it, it with all the stakeholders involved, not waiting until um, the, the final proposal or actually the building or intervention is done, is actually since the briefing, uh, the first thing that we actually do is we gather everybody and re rethink a little bit this briefing actually to see if it, makes sense to everybody. And then from there, we start this participation and co-creation that it's very organic. And it's something that it takes more time and energy, but in the end, it's uh, quite more fulfilling for uh, all the parts uh, involved. So uh, going specific to Palma. So we had this uh, amazing invitation from the cultural department of, of the Lisbon municipality that in resume they invited us to do this ephemeral artistic intervention in Rosu de Palma uh, and they basically pass us these uh, four um, uh, inputs that was this past intervention from the urbanist uh, department that actually it was supposed to have a participated process but it was not so participated in the end um, and also related with that, there was this loss of relation with the main square uh, from the, the local inhabitants um, that were mainly this uh, elderly community. So as Alshan Al already shared, and there was already um, uh, ongoing this, this uh, collected memory idea that the, the Department of uh, Culture was already uh, working on. Um, so by that moment, we decided that 
we were basing our proposal in three lines of work. So first, of course, these local stories, the narratives, the memories, this collective memory. Then this object that was going to be the intervention, it had to be a collaborative object that somehow connects all of these, like all these memories, all these stories to the present, to the square that was uh, missing some of this uh, activation. And then, uh, as it was a ephemeral uh, object or intervention, um, we still wanted to last. So it, we, we, we wanted to, that there was something after it. Um, so that's how we came up with this uh, uh, palm in, in English, the Palma portal, um, that was basically a portal between the past and the present. So it was absorbing all of these memories, all of these fragments, like everybody had their stories, their narratives about this, this space, about their lives in this neighborhood. And each one of these uh, uh, person, each one of these stories, each one of these uh, picture, um, they were fragments of this, this portal. Uh, then these fragments actually became uh, stools. So just a normal bench, a stool. Um, that uh, actually they were used as bricks to build up this portal. So this portal, it's made of these stools. Um, then this building, uh, as I said before, we wanted to, to have this uh, uh, collaborative uh, object or intervention. So for us, uh, and we do it in almost all of our projects, this, this idea that building something becomes a social moment. It's something that actually people take part in. This is a methodology that we use a lot. And it's, it's very positive to create ownership because people are actually taking part of building something. So it's an object that doesn't appear overnight uh, on the square. It's something that everybody is together building up. And then, as I said before, we wanted to last. So these fragments, these benches, these uh, memories, we wanted them to become seeds of something else. So we want them to somehow be spread. And this also means that uh, after the, the portal was unbuilt, there was no trash. So all of this material was actually something that everybody could use. In the worst case scenario, it was just a bench and everybody can use a simple stool or a simple bench in their home. So this was the idea. So going to the project, the project had, the, it's a really small project, but the process is quite long because it was ambitious, the, the outputs that we all wanted. Um, so first we start by putting this uh, info point. Now you see actually Alexandra share uh, an info point after the intervention. This was the first one. And it was very important to create this kind of um, dialogue. So it's there on site and it's a, a new thing that actually start to communicate to people that something is coming. This is very important. It's like we are heading up, like saying, okay, something is important. Something is coming in this, in this square. Then we start uh, to, to actually support it already by the, the cultural department and mainly by Edith and, and Sophia that they were, Sophia was almost every day there with people. And we support with this, we start listening to these stories to have time to actually, not only with the community, but with all the stakeholders. So people that work there, people that pass by every day, uh, people that are working specifically in this project, like the municipality department, we actually start to uh, listening to all these uh, stories and these narratives. And this is a very, very key uh, part of the process. It's because it's all about this trust, trustfulness of all the stakeholders involved. So we, we, we need this time to actually people understand what we are doing. Then, of course, we start to collect memories. And Sophia was like sending us, uh, I mean, more than hundreds, there was thousands of pictures and newspaper, old newspapers, so all of these memories that people were always talking about this. Um, and then, of course, then we had the design moment and the design phase, because we, in the end, we need to have uh, uh, an intervention. 
And this was also important to have a really simple, simple and inclusive uh, piece. So we could open it for the particip participation of people. Of course, we had also to test it like structurally, if it doesn't fall, that's why you see my dog there. Um, and this had to be really, really simple. So everybody could take part in it. Um, then we moved to the pre-production of some of these pieces. So it was an easy process to do it after it on, on the square with people um, and the communication of the process as well in the, in the neighborhood, but also outside. So we get a little bit also of the city coming and some of our friends, some of our colleagues that could start also to, to bring new dynamics to the place. Then we move, of course, for the, this building uh, phase. As I said before, this it's becomes uh, an event and a social moment, it's something that it's uh, super, super important to create this relationship what, for, for what's coming to be there. And, and, and here it, it involves, of course, the local community, but it involves as well people that are passing by, people that they knew about the project that they start to involve. So there was like all of these uh, local and not so local um, people that in all of these connections, it's very important. Um, and you can see in this picture that that's why it actually becomes this social moment because in all of this fuzz and all of this um, happening throughout this week, people actually sit and they start to interact and they actually start to use this square as it's, it, it's supposed to be. And everybody wants to help, of course. Uh, and then we put it up. So we, we co-built this portal. It was there. And it was a moment of activation. So it's a moment that people start actually to share again all the stories of all of these fragments and all of these memories. Um, and this is this activation, it's we, we we never see it as inauguration, we see it as a celebration or activation because inauguration normally means that something ends. So it's inaugurate, but it's actually starting something now. Um and yeah, one of the events that that Alexander already shared. And that I just have a really short video to show you, just to see the really fast the process. I hope that you hear. Can you hear? So we had to cut in the end, uh, <laughs> so we don't take too much time. Um, and then after the three weeks that the, this portal was there, um, we had to unbuild it because it was just an ephemeral intervention. And this is also the unbuilding. It's not a sad moment. It's actually a celebration because we keep continuing to do this. And this was the idea. And, and then Alexander already shared that the yeah, idea is to do a lot of things. So Portal de Palma was just one part of it. But this unbuilding of the portal was also a celebration moment. And it was a moment, it was the roasted pig uh, uh, lunch that was uh, very enthusiastic by everybody. But this unbuilding of the portal was also part of the idea that all these fragments, uh, somehow they, uh, defragmented that this portal of these memories and uh, each piece, each of these tools was actually given to, to somebody. So they became the, like the, guard, the guardians of, 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 
from a memory. Um, and then going to the end of it, um, of this intervention, of course, not the overall project, but this intervention, um, it was this idea that it's, it's an ephemeral uh, project, but we wanted to last and we wanted to have like further impacts. So the idea of the benches was, was also this. So the benches could actually um, be a way of, of um, um, spreading a little bit of this uh, energy and of this collaboration and participation um, uh, around this, this place, around this, this square. Um, and so actually when we all start to give these uh, benches to all the people like locally, uh, we, we saw that, of course, uh, the big amount of the, of these stools, these benches, these fragments, they were actually on the, on the neighborhood. Um, but we know that also uh, they spread even further and these fragments and these seeds they actually went to other places in Lisbon. Um, because we know that other people that pass by, they actually get some of these uh, benches and some of these uh, fragments. We as well, we took some. We know that the municipality took some as well. We, we know other people that took other benches to uh, different places in, in Lisbon. And, and in the end, we are now talking about this really small project and these seeds are, are actually going further and are going to this uh, presentation. So this in the end, this was the, uh, the lasting effect and the impact that we wanted to spread further uh, of this really small project. And that's why we are here today. So thank you. Thank you, Ruben. You just spread it Rocio de Palma all over Europe. All over Europe, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Great to have you here.